Hello, welcome pen friends. I am uh, back with another video where I'm going to do a little tutorial to show you how I do my little ink swatch cards. They're three inch by three inch on watercolor paper and I have to do some anyway and I just thought you might enjoy, um, you know, doing this with me basically. I have a couple I need to redo because they didn't come out very standardized. This was way back in the beginning and I found the vials of the little ink samples and I'm going to redo some of them. So um, those of you who follow me have seen a lot of these on comparison panels and these help me to look at the different inks and see what, what they have in common and how they're different. And it always allows us to see the sparkles if it's a shimmer ink, like this one, this uh, Troublemaker ink is a shimmer ink. And let's see, we may not have very many green that are water resistant, but it looks like this Tasha one was a little bit resistant to the water. Uh, oh, there's one that is too, the Birmingham Field Tourniquet. So there's a lot we can learn from this, but this video is just basically me showing you how I go about it. And this is probably gonna become really important uh, soon because of the collaborative project that I'm helping, um, you know, I'm participating in. It's actually the idea of another fountain pen uh, person who has built a website and I'll be able to go public about it before too long. But part, part of this project is uh, comparing inks. And so I just want to, uh, I'll be able to say a lot more later, but I want anybody who uh, wants to know to know how to do this. So Okay, so I'm going to show you what I use. I'm almost out because I'm not going to Walmart right now um, <laughs> for obvious reasons. But it's the Canson watercolor. I use this uh, 9 by 12 inch tablet and it's 140 pound, th 300 uh, gram. It's cold press. It's just to have a look at the ink. And then I, uh, I cut them into the little 3 by 3 squares. So... I get that question a lot, so I wanted to, you know, mention it right up in the beginning so you'd know. And so I have my water here and my uh, paint brushes. This was another thing I wanted to mention. I recently started doing my uh, ink swatches on the little uh, coloring index cards with the flat tip. This is a number six Royal and Langnickel um, because I saw Amanda B doing that and it just made sense. It like it went on nice and evenly and it just it looked like it used even less ink than what I had been. But I'm still using our, our watercolor round brush for this. So I'll show you that. Let's see. But this was another question I, I had had recently and I just wanted to mention that little update that I have been doing. So let me get my paper towel then I can dry up this and, and show you this is the one I use the same brush on all of these and that way I can get as much consistency oh dear number two Royal and Lang nickel it's getting it's even been glued together so it's just basically a, a watercolor or acrylic brush and it's getting getting old now but it's still working so you need a brush like this and then I actually use uh, this one for applying the water and you'll see how I do that but this is an Atlas number 58 red sable I don't know where it came from let's see it has a number five here and it's poor thing it's coming apart it doesn't it doesn't like sitting in the water maybe all that long but that's the one I use to apply the water to get the uh, to check the water resistance so let's see I was really wanting to get this colorverse light on series redone and I have some ink in here so the first thing I do is just uh, just get in here and and paint the top part always a lot of fun I really enjoy this <laughs> whoops well I made a splash but that's not gonna matter I guess I should uh, settle down though or I'll splash more than I want to <laughs> I made a little dot there but that is not gonna hurt us any at all so the top part is just basically the swatch where I can see the color and uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just, which is not going to be working around a tripod. So. And then, some, you know, sometimes I'll put just a little extra, but that's because I really like to see uh, how it varies, how the color, uh, and it'll dry a lot different than it looks right now, how the color looks. So then I just take this same brush and I just uh, dab on the ink. Sometimes I say paint, but it's ink for sure. 
in no particular way, although I'm much more consistent now because after seeing them over the years, I, I've been trying to make them very consistent. Okay, so there we go. And I just <laughs> love to see that color wherever it can be. And then I take uh, whatever I have, which right now what I have is a ballpoint pen, and I know that that will stay stable even if it gets wet. Sometimes I have the more fancy uh, Micron pens, but right now they're running low on ink and I don't want to use them for this. So this is a Papermate Ink Joy ballpoint and it's a 1.0. You don't, definitely don't have to have the same kind of thing that I have. And this is Colorverse. <clears throat> Lights on series. I can see that that came from Ink Journal. That was in an ink flight. So, okay, I'm going to set this aside, and that's good. You can see that you see the difference there. It, it, this one hasn't dried yet, so we're we're a long way from looking at how it's going to look, but that's okay. All right, so there's one, and then there was another one that was particularly bad too. Well, I didn't like how this looked. This was the Amethyst D Laurel, and I need one of these for the project. So. I have my sample. This this will be a little bit more complicated because I need to make sure that it's ready. It's a shimmer ink, so it, well, that's already, that's good. Didn't take much rolling to get that going. That's good. <clears throat> and it may not come out a lot different, but I can tell by the way I put the water on in that one that I was doing it different then. I, I wasn't using uh, the same technique. So I really want to try to keep them consistent. So here we go. <clears throat> Get this dried off. And certainly it's not going to take very many for you to see how I do it. And some of you have already seen this because I used to do these the whole panel when I would get the ink flight, but that was a long time ago. And some folks are new. We've got a lot of new pen friends here on the channel. Thank you for being here too. It's, it's a lot of fun, the more friends that we have here, so. Especially right now, I'm really feeling it, that I need to have a community, and this is, this is definitely a community I enjoy, as you guys. <clears throat> and pen pals, and the whole wider fountain pen community. Okay, I'm trying to stay steady, and I'm not, it's because I'm hitting the tripod. <laughs> Okay, and then, of course, with Shimmer Ink, as it dries, we'll see the shimmer. Right now, we really don't because it needs to dry. So I'm going to do that same thing. I'm just going to come in and blop, plop, paint on the ink. And, you know, not exactly the same as the other one, but as close as I can. Okay, there's that. Oh, that's such a nice color. It's one of my very favorites, and I was disappointed when I saw this, although it may just be uh, that I was using a different paintbrush, but I can see that I had some weirdness there. Same with that one. It was just weird, so we're going to fix the weird ones. <coughs> okay, and I don't let these cards dry all day, but I don't actually time them either. It's just, it's just something that I... I kind of keep track of them, and after they've dried a little bit, I apply the water. And I've tried it several different ways. It doesn't seem to make a huge difference, but it would if I let it sit overnight or for three hours or something. But it's pretty much uh, a fairly quick application of the water. Well, I'm not going to like that because of the way I'm writing this. But I don't think that's going to matter. It's it's on there. And actually, I think there's something more to that. It's the 1798. So let's get that on there too. 1798. That's just for me. It'll probably, it may not show up on the project, but at least it'll be there on the card. Okay. So now I am ready to uh, apply the water to this one. And that's why I have three waters, because I, this one's going to be the really super clean one. Let's do that one more time, just make sure that, yeah, this, this paintbrush actually is the reason it's hired for this job, is that it really works well. <coughs> it, it doesn't seem to collect the, uh, the ink. 
So I put it on um, and then I go into this middle one to just make sure I'm not transferring the ink. And I put plenty of water. And I don't have to cover every dot, but I, you know, I'm just trying to get plenty on there. Usually two, maybe three times or so. And that looks like plenty, but maybe just a little bit more just for the heck of it. So it's not like this is a laboratory setting where it's exactly, you know, perfect, but it, that's, that's more consistent with how I've been doing it. And it may be that that one has a little, I'm not sure how much water resistance that one's going to have. I know that, that this one has some. So, okay, we'll do one more card while we're waiting and then we'll do that one. So let's do the Dark Orchid. This is Sitz Kruznok Dark Orchid and it had a card that I, yeah, I didn't like that either for some reason. I was using that smaller brush, not the consistent one that I am now. And I just wanted to redo it because I want the cards to be as close to a uh, standard as I can for the project. So, okay. Oh, such a pretty color. It's gorgeous. Okay. I love how it goes on one way too and it it does dry sometimes very differently. Though I think this is a very vibrant color. It's not going to lose much. It's gorgeous. Okay. And we'll get that tapped on and then I'm ready to do the other water application on the shimmer ink there. I, I do sometimes end up with several of these because I will redo them. I'll make a few and just see how it looks. Um, but I have my collection now narrowed down to the one that I chose to represent each one, for right now anyway. And I've got several more that I'm working on so that we'll have everything that I have anyway eventually. Okay, so sits, S-E-I-T-Z, sits, cruise not. Ooh, I can't spell it. Let's see, where's the bottle for that? <clears throat> that would really help. Here it is. Okay, that'll make it easier. Oh, I'm getting, I got a dust in this office. Hello, Coco. Sits Cruise Knock. <clears throat> Dark Orchid. Okay, and I'm more than ready to do this one now, so get that into here. Okay, and just put the water on. Now, I know this one has more water resistance, but I don't know how much more because that was so long ago that I did that. I don't remember. And I wanted to do a fresh card for it and have the water more evenly applied, that's all. <clears throat> now I'm starting to see the sparklies too. Okay, plenty of water there. Um, I, won't, I won't fool with it too much, but I can actually see the sparkling. You, you might be able to too. Hey, I see I'm rolling the water around. Okay, I'd like to leave that alone. So that could be good. And then... Maybe we'll do one more, because I've got a few, but... Okay, Hippo Purple. For some reason, I didn't... I had... I don't know. It was too long ago, I guess, and I didn't feel like it was real consistent, so we'll do that one over, too. And it's a it's a purplish-brownish... <laughs> it's a hippo color. It's really cool. Um, I guess what I wanted to do was get that over into the clean one. And I of, often have to change waters. You could t tell what's happening already. I got this neutral one here that's already getting la lavender. <laughs> and we're all the way dirty over here on the purple one. Okay, so we'll get this on there. Every time I look at this, I get shocked. Like, oh, this is really brown. It's not purple. Well, that's kind of... That's makes sense because um, I've seen the hippos in the Canadian Zoo that I went to and <laughs> they were not actually purple but they had that funny color brown and I love to watch them. 
Okay, I like that. I'm going to let that stay lighter down on the bottom there. That's pretty. Anytime you can get a nice glimpse at, at the variety of what the ink shows, it's nice. Okay. Oh, well, that was brilliant. I still need that. <laughs> I need to do the plopping on the color. I could actually do this all day, but I've only got two more sheets, so i got to be real selective about only doing the ones that need to be redone right now. And hopefully um, the arts and crafts department at Walmart will recover, and hopefully we'll feel like venturing into a Walmart within the next month or so. Um, it's not a place that's on our list right now. So we have not been since early March, I think, in, into a Walmart. So, Okay, there we go. Okay, and then, so Robert Oster. Hippo. Purple. They have another purple, can't remember the name of it, that was the, it was a special for uh, Hippo Noto. And I, I really, that one was really interesting to me. I haven't seen it yet in person, but Wow, that looks nice. That has some variety, you know, some variation, even in the dots or whatever you want to call it. Okay, time for this one to be done, and then I think we'll I'll end the video. Okay, so I am getting a more consistent, as this dries, it shows the water resistance, and it shows how the color did move around, but this was just the old, old style, and I'm just getting rid of all of those. Those are not going to be very helpful to me. Since I want consistency as much as I can get of it anyway. That way, um, even though it is watercolor paper and we, we are not usually writing on watercolor paper, this is a, a, the way I study the color of the fountain pen inks and I just really enjoy it. It's therapeutic and it's fun to do this way for me. And I know I'm not the only one because I've had enough feedback over the years to know that I'm not the only one and hopefully some of you will want to make some of these cards for inks that I don't have who knows okay so there's that one we're gonna let that sit for a minute or two yeah so that's basically it and it does take a good long time for these to dry um, on a day like today we're at almost 90 degrees in South Texas and it's a little bit humid today we're actually expecting a cold front, so we're going to have our last, probably our last cold front come in, and we'll be in the 50s, and that will be fun. I'll enjoy it, because after that, we're probably going into heat and humidity. Um, but it takes probably two hours for these to dry. So, um, I mean, they'll be dry enough not to roll around like this within maybe an hour. And I don't mess with them. I just let them do their thing. And some of the most interesting things happen... Um, well, even in these, th I have my uh, panel out for what I'm writing with this month. Even in this one, you can see it. The Diatromenus aubergine made some really nice shading and showed some water resistance. The Monteverde topaz was just amazing. It, it, you know, it like opened up the heavens and made yellow in the middle. And it was just, and then same with the Blackstone Barrister Violet. It showed that water resistance. In fact, I thought it would show even more, but that's how it came out. The Kelly Green was pretty astounding, too. You never know what you're going to get. Um, the Dimine Aurora Borealis, too. You, most of you have seen this because that was in my Chris's inked pens. So how it looks right now may not stay that way. Uh, it, sometimes the, the ink underneath completely disappears. Um, kind of did that with the KWZ Green, but it left kind of an interesting pattern there so anyway I didn't want to make this a long video because I've got a chatty video planned <laughs> as it is but I thought before I do that video where I wanted to talk more about the project I wanted you to see how I do these and in fact I think it's time now we can definitely yeah we can apply the water to this one last one the hippo purple this is a complex ink so it's likely to do all kinds of stuff as it dries and I had a few cards where I had done this, and I don't know why I was picky about how they came out. That doesn't usually happen. 
There, okay. All right, now the best to leave it alone could just let it do its own thing. It'll dry and it'll swirl around or do whatever it wants to do. I try to flatten them as much as I can. There, okay, so I'll see you back here before long on my next video. I hope you're having a great day. As I'm filming it, it's, it's Easter Sunday and it's the most unusual Easter Sunday I've ever had. Um, my Easter Sunday usually involves a barbecue and lots of family and sometimes church. It just, you know, depends. Um, different years, different times it has been different. But uh, we're making the best of it anyway, and we're very grateful to be healthy and happy and have uh, worthwhile projects to work on, artistic things and practical projects too. So let me know how you're doing in the comments. And I'd also like to hear, would you ever try this? Um, actually, I had an index card out to try this on, but uh, I want to keep all of mine real consistent. So we'll keep that for another time. If I try it, I'll come on and show you... Um, you know what happened but I think the watercolor paper holds it really well and so these will be long-lasting uh, comparison tiles that I can work with and you can too if you want to do this with some of your inks okay that's it and I'll see you next time thank you for joining me bye for now